All right, welcome, economics. Uh, we are looking at lesson 6.1. This is the role of money. And uh, we are gonna describe the uses and functions of money, characteristics of money. Uh, you should know the difference between a commodity and representative uh, types of money. Uh, we're gonna talk about the positive and negative aspects of currency. You can see a little better, um, as well as other uh, media exchange. So basically, money is anything that serves as a medium of exchange. Okay, unit of account and a store value. Money has three uh, purposes. So as a medium of exchange, it's anything that we use to determine the value uh, in exchange of goods and services. Like when you go to Walmart, we use money to pay for things. Uh, bartering. Uh, this is where money doesn't change hands, but you exchange goods or services uh, with another. I love bartering. You know, maybe if you go with a friend and you're like, oh, well, I, you've got that color. I got this color. Let's trade. And that's bartering. Or um, with your neighbor, how about I mow both our lawns this week and you mow both our lawns next week? Perfect. Um, I even did this when I had my own business. I'd find out what my clients were. And sometimes they would bring me uh, like stuff from their business. One had, a, he had a water ski store. He'd bring me skis and jackets and uh, I would barter uh, tumbling classes with them. Uh, money is a unit of account. Basically as a unit of account, we, we place a value on things. And you know, how much something is worth. Like when you start talking iPhones, is an iPhone 6 worth the same as an iPhone 11 Pro? Mm -mm, nope, they're different, different unit of account. Um, and store of value. Now students get this mixed up, so you gotta listen closely. Store of value means it holds on to its value, okay? A dollar today is, worth, is gonna be worth a dollar tomorrow. And students go, but you said in the last one, I agree. But in, the, in topic five, we were talking about real wages and purchasing power and what can be purchased with a dollar today and a dollar 20 years from now. This is completely different, okay? This is just saying that if I have a $1 bill, it's worth $1. 20 years from now, it's gonna be still worth $1. We're not talking about what you can buy with a dollar. We're just talking about its value will still be $1. Now, 20 years from now, a dollar might have the value of, you know, a penny today once we take inflation and everything. And again, that's purchasing power, that's real wages, that's the real value of money. But as a uh, store of value, if you've got $1,000, it will still be worth $1,000. If you put it in a bank account, you're still gonna have $1,000 in 20 years. Purchasing power, that you're gonna lose. So two different things. Um, currency is anything that's used as money. It could have been shells, it could have been teeth, it could have been corn, cows. Uh, we use corn and paper bills, coins and paper bills as money. Uh, there's two types of money. We have commodity money and re we have representative money. Commodity money is gonna be anything, any object that has value, um, in and of itself, as well as money. Uh, you might say gold, you might say diamonds, diamond rings, um, has a value uh, other than just being used as money. Um, a cow has value to a farmer. Um, if you look on the stock exchange, you'll have some stocks that are commodity stocks, and that'd be like bacon and, and cattle and uh, oranges and you know orange oranges have a value other than money because it's food they're nutritious but then representative money um, I accidentally put commodity twice uh, this is things that have no value like if you take our actual dollar bills if they're not uh, uh, worth money so that we can exchange for other goods and services what can you do with a dollar bill you can write on it. There's not much room to write. You can burn it and make a nice fire. But there's, they, there's no value to a dollar. You can do origami with it, I guess. Uh, but there's no need to have a, an actual dollar bill if it's not money. 
Uh, specky money. This is coins that are made of gold or silver that could be given in exchange for paper money. Uh, we used to have coins that were made out of gold and silver. Uh, used to have silver dollars. That term came from the fact they were made out of silver. And if you have pure silver dollars, uh, they're worth a, they're worth a lot of money. Um, yeah, uh, we I actually have some that were given to my kids, and they're only worth a dollar if we take them to Walmart. But to a coin collector, they're probably worth about twenty to fifty dollars because of the silver content. Um, Fiat money, this is money that uh, is an order or decree. Our currency in the United States is both representative money and fiat money. If you turn on the back of the money, it literally says uh, federal note uh, of the United States, uh, treasury or something, legal tender of the United States. Um, again, it, it, it has to be backed by a government in order to be considered money. So take this scenario, it's a hot day, it was Saturday at the ball game, and you were thirsty, you go into the store and you pull out soda, you pull out some paper clips, you pull out bubble gum. Can you pay for the drink with that? No, you're gonna need money. That's what they're gonna take. They're not gonna take paper clips or, ooh, gum here, I, I, I got this. And, um, you got to have money in order to exchange things because everybody takes money because we have three uses for money. First one, it's a medium of exchange, a unit of account, and store of value. Okay, so here's somebody using money. They're buying some. Oh, she's buying chocolate donuts. I was like, what is she buying? She's buying chocolate donuts. Um, so when it's used as a medium of exchange, that's what we do every day. Uh, you go into a store, you have something you buy, you, you purchase it with money, you take the item with you. Uh, when it's used for a, a unit of account, it's for valuing things. Uh, like in the example here, we've got two jackets. The blue one costs more than the red one. Why? Maybe the red one is a light windbreaker and the blue one is a down coat, which would be more expensive. It has down. Uh, maybe the blue one is a name brand and, and the red one is a no brand. Maybe that makes it difference. Um, you know, when we all, when you're good shoppers, you realize sometimes that just because things cost more doesn't mean they're necessarily better, but we do use it as a unit of account. And then it's a store of value. It holds its value. Um, again, if it's a dollar bill, it's still going to be worth a dollar bill. Now, again, we're not talking about purchasing power, uh, just the fact that it holds its value. When you buy a car, for an example, that's not a store of value. Uh, if you buy a car for $10,000, you drive it, it's gonna then be worth 8,000, then seven, then six, then five. Eventually, it'll get down to zero. Um, a dollar bill is gonna stay a dollar bill. It's gonna stay a dollar bill. It's never gonna, go, it's never gonna decrease down to zero. It will stay a dollar. Um, so we have six characteristics of money uh, because there's been different kinds of money used. Cattle, you see dried fish first, uh, people bartered for things, uh, wheat, seashells. Uh, but we like money because one, it's durable. You've all had money in your back pocket and you or your moms washed it in the laundry and it's still good. Mm -hmm. uh, it's portable, fits in our pocket, fits in our purse. It's divisible. Uh, you can take a $10 bill to pay for a $5 item and get $5 back. If you're paying with a cow, is it divisible? Mm, yeah, no, that'd be kind of gross. Um, money is uniform. Everybody has the same money. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's a limited supply of money. Now, some people always say, and I used to have this idea, if there's poor people out there, why don't we just print more money and give it to them? Uh, we're going to learn this through uh, the money supply and through several of the topics. That is a bad idea because what ends up happening when you print more money, when you increase the money supply, you cause inflation. And if we printed that much money to help everybody out, we would just cause severe stagflation, high inflation rates, and we'd actually create more poor people uh, in the long run because things would be more expensive. Uh, money is also, last one, an acceptable form of payment. Just about everybody takes money. 
This is a wampum belt uh, that European colonists would trade the Native Americans for. It was unique, it was different. They could go back to Europe and say, hey, look what I got in the Americas. This one is a, a nice chart on all the different ways you can divide $5. And again, there's, there's many more than this. Uh, what are the combinations of nickels, dimes, pennies, and quarters that you can have to create $5? Uh, there's lots of different ways, lots. Um, so if you think about money in your pocket, again, they meet those six characteristics. Um, but what actually makes that money valuable? It's valuable because it's representative money and it's fiat money. Okay. Um, it's a decree from the United States government that it has value. So this is, I love this little meme here. <laughs> Guy goes in, he wants a drink. <coughs> Excuse me. He's trying to pay uh, with a cow. And the guy's like, have you got anything? Or he's like, sorry, I don't have anything smaller. I mean, imagine that. Imagine if we paid with cows. And yes, this kind of gross, but you go to Walmart. Ooh, that's a hind quarter. There you go. Oh, that's just near. That would make no sense. Or money used to be backed by gold. What do you do? You carry your gold nugget around and, oh, that's $10. Here, let me chip off $10 worth of gold. It's not practical. So that is why, you know, it used to be you, you put your gold in the bank and the bank gave you notes or money to represent the amount of gold you had in the bank. And that is 6-1. See you back for 6-2.